Again, welcome to Preserving Your Podcast. My name is Emily and I'm a librarian here with the Plano Public Library. I will be presenting today's program. Emery will be assisting our program today and helping to moderate the chat and any questions you have for us today. Before we begin, we need to let you know some ground rules that we have set up for today's program. You will be muted during this class and have your video blocked. You will see only the instructor's screen. At the top of your screen, you can find an exit full view option if you need to get anything else from your computer. You are welcome to ask questions or request the instructor repeat information at any time during today's program. You should see an icon at the bottom of your screen that says chat. If you click on this button, it will open the chat window. If you prefer, you can also use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the screen to ask any questions. Chat and Q&A submissions are set to be seen only by library staff. Please be aware that any inappropriate questions or comments will result in your immediate removal from today's class. For all questions, we may ask, answer them directly in the chat or Q&A box, hold them until the end of the session, or answer them immediately if it is pressing. Links for today's resources will be available in the chat box. Finally, a recording of today's program will be available in a few days. With these ground rules out of the way, let's get started. Today, we will be discussing preserving your podcast. This class is intended as a general overview of why and how you should be preserving your podcast, including organizing your files, creating backups of your files, creating metadata, protecting your RSS podcast feed, and developing a podcast preservation plan, or PPP. At the end of our program, we will have time for questions. Please be aware that while we will be touching on the topic of podcast creation, this program is not intended to teach you how to create a podcast and we'll be not going in depth into this process. With that in mind, let's jump into preserving your podcast. Before we discuss how to preserve your podcast, it's important to understand better how a podcast is created and distributed to its listeners. A podcast is an audio program that is pre-recorded and published on a regular or semi-regular schedule and distributed to its listeners who subscribe to it. Because podcasts live virtually, they can be listened to whenever and wherever and reach huge audiences around the world. How exactly the distribution of a podcast works is fairly simple. A podcast starts off as an audio file or MP3 and is saved to the creator's computer. The creator then uploads that audio file to a podcast hosting platform, such as Buzzsprout, Podbean, Simplecast, or SoundCloud. The podcast hosting platform stores the podcast audio file on its servers and creates a URL or digital location for that audio file. The audio file URL is coded using XML RSS code to build an RSS feed for the podcast. The podcast hosting platform then sends out that RSS feed to podcast directories or podcatchers and other applications where listeners search for, store, listen to, and subscribe to podcasts. Those include Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, and Stitcher. Listeners who subscribe to a podcast will link to the podcast RSS feed with their personal RSS feed. This allows their personal RSS feed to automatically download new podcast episodes when they become available. While this is one of the most common ways podcasts are distributed, it is not the only way. However, we will be focusing on this model for today's purposes. Additionally, while podcasts are primarily composed of audio files, they may also contain images, text transcripts, and video files. These files can be uploaded and distributed through a similar process. So why would you want to preserve your podcast? Preservation is any activity performed to prevent the loss or damage to a thing or its contents to prolong its usable life. In other words, preservation allows you to continue to use or access something. There are a number of reasons why you would want to preserve your podcast. First, you worked very hard to create your podcast. Why wouldn't you want to save it for future generations of listeners to be able to access? This includes access to your, your podcast as well as related files like transcripts, images, and unedited audio. Second, digital files are notoriously susceptible to becoming lost, unplayable, or both 
and podcasts and their related technologies are unfortunately one of the most at risk of disappearing. There are a number of reasons for this, including software becoming obsolete, so you're unable to create, edit, or play podcasts. Does anyone remember VHS or cassette tapes? If you do, can you still play them? Data can become corrupted and prevent your computer from finding or opening the podcast files. Third-party services, like your podcast hosting platforms, may go out of business or change in a negative manner that prevents the distribution of your podcast. Files may be accidentally deleted, hard, hard drives may crash, and other storage issues may happen, which prevent you from accessing your podcast. And sometimes economic hardships, such as not being able to pay your podcast hosting platform fees, or you can't afford to purchase a new computer, leading to your podcast becoming lost or stuck in a limbo. Third, disasters happen. These can be both big, like hurricanes, small, such as a coffee smell, or unexpected, like a stolen computer. Regardless of the size, any disaster can have catastrophic results on your podcast, so you should always expect and prepare for the worst. While today we're specifically talking about podcasts, many of these preservation concerns and recommendations are applicable to any digital file you create and want to protect for future use. Now, let's get started on preserving your podcast. There can be a lot of anxiety when it comes to thinking about preservation and where to start. Knowing what you have, how much you have, and where you have it by getting organized is the best place. The goal of organizing is to create a relationship map between all of your files. This is most effectively accomplished through strategic use of folders structured hierarchically. Think of folders like a set of nesting containers. In your smallest container, your folder, that is, there are many tiny compartments or files containing specific elements related to your podcast episode. These elements can, could include raw audio files, edited audio files, master's audio files, images, transcripts, a whole number of different elements. Some of these containers contain multiple related elements, while others may only contain one. These small containers are fit into medium-sized containers and show that they are related to each other. The medium-sized container in this case uh, would be your podcast episode. That medium-sized container then fits into a larger container being your podcast season. And that large container fits into a giant container with that giant container being your podcast show. All of those are nested together to show their relationship to one another and keep them organized. In addition to your items being nested within each other, other items may be organized at the same level. For example, if your podcast uses the same music throughout an entire season, that music would be stored at the same folder level or container level, as our example showed, as all the other episodes of that season. The more relationships you create through folders, the easier it is to locate specific files and understand your podcast data. While nesting can show relationships between folders and files, appropriately naming these items can further assist in advancing your organizational efforts. In fact, developing a folder and file naming convention is imperative to successfully organizing your podcast folders and files. Using a consistent naming convention enables you to more easily locate your folders and files and know what is in them. Think about how many times you have looked through the files of your computer and it has had a name like image1234.png. You have no idea what that is by looking at it and you need to open it to find out. If the file had a name like 2023-08-01 podcast show cover photo final.png, you would have a lot better idea of an idea of what kind of file you're looking at without having to open it. While there is no prescribed single way to name your folders and files, there are best practices that you should follow. These include starting with the date, adding descriptive keywords that tell you what the file or folder contains, adding a file version such as final or raw, avoiding spaces between characters and using underscores or camel case as a separator, and most importantly, being consistent. Metadata 
So creating metadata is one of the biggest things you can do to help preserve your podcast. Metadata is simply data about data. What the heck does that mean? It can be applied to many, many different types of data and in endless types and amounts of situations. For example, when you search for a book in the library catalog, the search result page for that book contains the book's metadata. So in essence, when it comes to podcast data, your metadata is information created about those files, including your MP3 audio and your doc transcript files, as well as your folders that tells you everything you need to know about them without needing to open them. This includes what the files are in that folder, the types and sizes of the file, keywords related to those files and folders, and so much more. Metadata can vary in its complexity and can live inside and outside files and folders. For example, you cannot insert an entire transcript into your podcast audio file that you upload to your podcast hosting platform. There is simply no place to attach this. Instead, you can create a relationship between the transcript file and the audio file by tagging each file within the other. We, we, will, talk about more of a little, we will talk a little bit more about tags in a bit. Metadata is standardized using specific fields and tags and conveniently embedded within your files and folders. So no matter where your file or folder goes, that metadata goes with it and the computer will be able to read it. Having this metadata helps the computers, streaming platforms, and web aggregators like Google, as well as people to better understand what these files and folders contain and allows them to be more quickly and easily located. Remember back to our previous example of the poorly named computer file, image1234.png? While the name of that file tells us nothing about its contents, if there was any metadata attached to that file, we could still know what it contained without having to open it. The best analogy for understanding metadata is to think of it like a shipping container wrapped around your podcast file. On the outside of that shipping container are different labels telling you information about its contents. For example, title, creator, length, size, file address, etc. When you upload your podcast to a podcast hosting platform, the metadata you created goes with it and is shared by the file's RSS feed to the podcast directories or podcatchers and eventually to the listeners who discover and download these files. Having this metadata attached makes the shipping process much easier and ensures your package reaches its appropriate destination. Metadata can get very complicated as files are often located in multiple places and you can attach metadata to many different layers of your files, RSS feeds, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, metadata can get very complicated as files are often located in multiple places and podcasts have multiple layers of files and your RSS feeds are wrapped around your metadata and much, much more. Try not to overwhelm yourself when creating metadata for your podcast, but do keep in mind that the more metadata you create, the better. Again, your listeners are discovering your podcast through its metadata. The more you invest in creating quality metadata, especially keywords, the more your podcast will reach its target audience and be preserved for future use. Since the pod metadata is created by you, it also allows you to describe your podcast and its files exactly how you want. Unfortunately, your metadata can be manipulated by AR, AI, and other systems as it travels from server to server. Try not to overwhelm yourself when it comes to creating metadata to your podcast, but do keep in mind that the more metadata data that you create, the better. Again, the more metadata you create and the better quality metadata you create, especially keywords, the more likely your podcast will reach its target audience and be preserved for future use. Since metadata is created by you, it also allows you to describe your podcast and its files exactly how you want. Unfortunately, your metadata can be manipulated by AI and other systems as it travels from server to server. It is important that you regularly back up your metadata to protect and control your original work for future use. We will discuss backups and creating backup plans a little later. Because metadata plays such a crucial role in accessing, assessing, I apologize, accessing your podcast, it is considered to be key to preservation and should be created for your podcast wherever and whenever you can. 
This particularly applies to ID3 tax. ID3 tags are metadata specific to MP3 audio files and live in your files bitstream. There are numerous free and paid programs available that allow you to edit and add ID3 tags, including MP3 tag, Easy tag, Audacity, and ID3 editor. Because metadata lives within the file and travels with it, you can encode metadata into your file using one program and edit it in another. ID3 tags were originally developed to describe the contents of a music audio file, not podcast. Because of this, the tag fields available do not exactly correspond to the information relevant to podcast. For example, there is an ID3 tag for an album and a track, but podcasts don't use those descriptors. With this in mind, ID3 tag standards for podcast have been developed and adopted to reflect these differences. For example, you will use the artist field to list the podcast host, the title field to list the podcast episode name, and the album field to list the podcast title. There's also a URL tag field where you can link to the show notes web address. Since the foundation of the podcast are since the foundation of podcasts are MP3 audio files, ID3 tags are crucial to podcasts and their preservation. Without them, podcast files would contain no metadata other than the file name, and listeners would never know what the podcast show is, who the host is, what episode the file is for, and more without listening to the audio file. Realistically, without this metadata and the keywords with it, a podcast would likely never be discovered and would become lost. Even if you change or use a generic file name, ID3 tags will display and follow your file. Not to scare you, but please, please, please add as many ID3 tags as you can to your podcast audio file. The future of your podcast depends on it, really. Once you have your files and folders organized and your metadata created, it's time to create your backups and lots of them. As mentioned at the beginning of this program, digital files are notorious for becoming corrupted and getting deleted. Even if your podcast files are being stored on your hosting platform servers, don't assume that they're safe. Podcast hosting platforms can intentionally or unintentionally delete anything that you upload. The key to protecting your files is by employing the LOCKS method. LOCKS stands for Lots of Copies Keep Stuff Safe. Employing this method essentially means you make as many copies of your files with the mindset that even if your files get deleted, corrupted, lost, or something happens to them, you will still have some of them available and accessible. One of the ways that you can apply the locks method is called the 321 backup plan, whereby you save at least three copies of your files, store your files on at least two separate devices. This can be your computer hard drive, an external hard drive, a USB flash drive, or a RAID network. And you store one copy far away from where you live, such as a cloud-based server or your parents' house if it's across the country. Using the 321 backup plan guarantees that your files will be safe even if disaster strikes by ensuring that at least one viable copy of your file persists. Your 321 backup plan can be as complex or as simple as your technological skills, time, and budget allows. The complexity of your plan does not matter as much as you consistently applying the plan. That is why it is imperative that you create a workflow to ensure that you are consistently backing up your files. The best way to do this is by adding backing up your files to your podcast production workflow. So when you finish creating an episode, you back it up. The longer you wait, the more at risk your files will be of becoming corrupted, lost, or something else. If we go back to our metadata analogy of the shipping container, you can think of your RSS feed as the delivery driver for that container. That is, an RSS feed acts as the delivery mechanism that transports your podcast files across the internet to everyone who has requested them, like podcatchers, listeners, or other services. Podcasting would not exist without RSS feeds. 
It's therefore important that you preserve your RSS feed for your podcast to ensure your podcast continues to be disseminated. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication or Rich Site Summary, depending on who you ask. As mentioned, when you upload your podcast file to the podcast hosting platform, the hosting platform encodes your file using XML and allows your file to be sent from one server to another across the internet. The RSS XML code looks very similar to HTML, but is not the same. Podcast catchers are able to read this code and distribute your podcast to their listeners. But what happens when your podcasting host your podcast hosting platform goes out of business or you can't pay your hosting fee? Unfortunately, many podcast RSS feeds are lost due to this. If you if you pod your podcast RSS feed is lost, podcatchers will be unable to locate your podcast and listeners will no longer have access to it. In order to preserve your podcast, you must preserve your RSS feed. There are several ways you can preserve your RSS feed. First, you can speak with your podcast hosting platform about whether or not they offer a 301 redirect service. A 301 redirect service is a permanent web address redirect that allows someone accessing the old web address to automatically be transported to your new web address. For podcasters, this means that if you move podcasts, your podcast from one podcast hosting platform to another, the podcasters will still be able to use your old podcast hosting platform's RSS code and be redirected to the new podcast hosting platform so your listeners never lose access to your podcast. Most reputable podcast hosting platforms will offer the service, but not all do. Second, try to select a podcast hosting platform that does not use proprietary software and instead uses open source software. You never know if a podcast hosting platform will go out of business or how long your host will keep your files in their server if you miss a payment. If you have access to an open source software, you can access the podcast RSS code and update it as needed. On a similar note, all podcasters should create a free account with the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive is a free open so source audio collection that allows you to upload your podcast audio files. These files are discoverable through web aggregators like Google, and you can easily create an RSS feed for them. Whether you choose to use this as your primary podcast hosting platform or as a backup is a great thing to consider. Third, submit your RSS feed pod for your podcast to Podcaster with an RE. Podcaster is a podcast RSS feed database that it was created and is managed by the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So long as your RSS feed points to a live file, you can play them from this database. There is no fee to host your podcast RSS feed using Podcaster and is a great way to back up your RSS feed. Now that you better understand the necessary steps to preserving your podcast, it's time to create your podcast preservation plan or PPP. Your podcast preservation plan is a list of concrete action items you plan to take in order to preserve your own podcast. There are no rules or prescribed structures for a podcast preservation plan. And there is no plan too big or too small. When creating your plan, a good first step is to identify the risks to better understand and prioritize actions needed. Next, you will want to create a list of action items that will help ensure your files will remain accessible and functional in the long term. This can include adding transcripts to your production process, buying an external hard drive, researching and selecting cloud-based storage providers, and ask, asking your podcast hosting platform if they provide a 301 redirect service. Finally, you will need to commit to and complete these action items. A podcast preservation plan is only as effective as the individual carrying it out. Your podcast preservation plan is a living document. It will need to be revised, updated, and reviewed on a regular basis in order to be successful. Remember, this plan is for you and the preservation of your podcast. If you're interested in learning more about digital preservation and preserving your podcast, please check out these additional resources the Plano Public Library offers. For short questions you would like to ask library staff, 
you may submit an online request at any time using our Ask a Librarian service. A librarian will usually respond to you within 48 hours of, with the information you need. For more one-on-one -on -one assistance with one of our librarians, you can complete a book a librarian request. Each 30-minute session is tailored to your specific needs and is compatible with your schedule. For many of these topics we covered today, you can find additional online tutorials and resources through LinkedIn Learning and Udemy. This resource is available to you for free through your Plano Library card. For those needing space to record or edit their podcast, you can reserve one of our three digital creation spaces, which offer recording technologies and Adobe software. In addition to these library resources, you can also find detailed guides on digital preservation from the Digital Preservation Coalition, the American Library Association Preservation Resources, the Library of Com Congress Personal Digital Archiving Resource, and Duke University's Digital Preservation Guide. If you'd enjoyed today's program, there are several upcoming program opportunities we recommend you checking out. This includes Adobe Creative Cloud Premiere Pro Basics on November 3rd, Adobe Creative Cloud Adobe Audition Basics on November 13th, Adobe Creative Cloud Premiere Pro Tips and Tricks on December 12th, and Building Your Brand on December 7th. A recording of today's class will become available in a few days through the Plano Public Library's YouTube channel. As you exit the program, please take a moment to complete our program survey, which will pop up on the screen as you exit. We will also include a link in the chat. We, will, we value your feedback and appreciate you joining us for today's program. Thank you very much.